if NA is not zero, but NB is zero, then you can bring NA from right hand side to the left hand side. So you get one minus XA NAZ equal to minus CDAB. And I can also change partial differentiation to total differentiation. Because I assume that concentration of A or more fraction of A does change with respect to Z only. It does not change with respect to R or Zeta. So problem here is converted from three dimensional into only one dimension. So there's uh, flux in only one direction, Z direction only. From here, I'm going to bring 1 minus XA to the right hand side. So you get minus CDAB 1 over XA DXA by DZ. From this, I can take it and replace into shear balance. So from shear balance, you have minus DNA Z by DZ equal to zero. I intentionally keep this minus sign simply because this minus sign and that minus sign will cancel out eventually. eventually. So bring that here. You get D by DZ of C DAB 1 minus XA DXA by DZ equal to 0. Normally, diffusion coefficient or diffusivity does not change with respect to position. So it is constant in this case, we can take it out. If you bring it out, it can be dropped because the right hand side is zero. How about concentration here? Does it change with respect to Z? Do you think the concentration change with respect to Z? But you need to be very careful here. C, by definition, is total concentration. This is not concentration of A. This is total concentration. That means it is number of moles of A and B combined per unit volume. Do you think it is constant? As I said, Whenever you have the system which is vapor or gas, we can normally assume the ideal gas law. From ideal gas law, PV equal to nRT. So N over V equal to P over RT. N is mole, V is um, volume, right? So this is mole per volume. What is this number? Is it C? If you use ideal gas law, as long as a, if you use total pressure and temperature of the system, the number of moles under this ideal gas law is supposed to be mole of everything combined. If you use partial pressure of A, then N here is supposed to be NA, right? So if I use total pressure, total pressure here, total number of mole divided by volume is basically 
our total concentration C. So is it constant? Does it change with respect to position? No, because R is constant. Pressure, does pressure change with respect to Z? The system is vapor, pressure does not change much with respect to relatively short distance. So pressure is constant, temperature is constant for isothermal system. So therefore C is constant. Okay? So if C is constant, I'm going to take it out. Once you took it out, it can be dropped because the right hand side is zero. So integration, first integration you get 1 over 1 minus xA dxA by dz equal to constant C1. Okay. Then I can change the differentiation just a little. I can get 1 minus xA change from dxA to d of 1 minus xA by dz and I put minus sign up here equal to C1, right? I can do that. So then we have 1 over u du and integration is simple. So if you take an integration, you get minus logarithm of 1 minus xA equal to C1 times Z plus another constant C2. On the left hand side we have logarithm, so therefore it is more convenient to determine or to say that C1 here can be thought of as logarithm of another constant k1. C2 is logarithm of minus of k2. As long as k1 and k2 are constant, I can do that. And minus sign here are put there so that this minus sign can be dropped. So if you take the combination of this, you get 1 minus xA equal to k1 power of z times k2. Okay? So we have two variables, k1 and k2. In order to find out what they are, you will need two boundary conditions. Do we have two boundary conditions? So boundary condition is supposed to tell you concentration or mole fraction of A at one particular position. So we look for boundaries. Boundary of the system, we have one boundary here at Z1 and another boundary at Z2. Okay? Do we know concentration of water at this particular point? Yes, we do. You can calculate it using thermodynamics. But remember, right now our system is vapor. Concentration in this equation is concentration in vapor phase. That means the concentration at this particular point supposed to be defined based on vapor phase. Okay? How can we find or how can we determine concentration of vapor right above the liquid surface? If you assume that vapor at this particular point is equilibrium with the liquid itself, then you can use thermodynamics too to calculate partial pressure, right? The mole fraction here, let's call it XA1. 
supposed to be um, vapor pressure of A divided by total pressure at saturation point. On the other hand, at Z2, XA2 can be determined based on known concentration of A in this stream. If you say that the air that you use is dry air, absolutely no moisture, XA2 becomes zero. Otherwise, you, suppose you should be able to measure concentration in, in air stream. Okay? So we, we say that XA2 is supposed to be no number. So we have two boundaries. First, at Z equal to Z1, XA equal to XA1. You replace into the equation, you have 1 minus XA1 equal to K1 power of Z1 times K2. Then another boundary is as Z equal to Z2, XA is equal to XA2. You end up with another equation. Okay, so two equations, two unknowns, K1 and K2, you can solve for K1 and K2. If you do so, you get K1 equal to 1 minus XA1, or 2. Bring K1 and K2 back to e the equation here. Here, you you get the answer. From there, you get the concentration profile. Okay. Am I am I going too fast? No. Good. <laughs> 